product review video. I'm Travis, Blizzard's Basement Hero, and today we're in my garage taking a look at Blizzard's Block 1 IP and Block 2 IP, two of Blizzard's latest outdoor rated fixtures. So let's jump right in and get started. So I'm just going to take a look at each fixture and talk about the features of each one and kind of go through it and let you know what I think as we go along. Let's start with the Block 2 IP. So just taking a look at it, it looks similar to the regular Block 2. Now I did do a review video on that and there's probably a link somewhere around here that you can click on to go check out that video. But the Block 2 IP of course is IP65 rated so that we can use this fixture at our outdoor events. And I can tell you just from holding on to it, I can definitely tell this is built rugged, built tough, it's an all metal housing, certainly has some weight to it. Um, but I feel confident that this is certainly ready to be used outside. Now let's talk about the LEDs. So right on the top, we see that there's two LEDs, of course, hence the Block 2. Both of these are 25 watts each, super bright, and you can get some really great color mixing with the, their 5-in-1, so RGB, W, plus UV. So you might find some opportunities to use that UV at some outdoor events, which is really neat. Um, staying on the top of the fixture here, down at this end, we see the LCD menu here along with four buttons. Of course, we need to keep this all sealed, so the buttons here on top are actually touch sensitive, which is pretty neat. Um, this whole thing on the top here is either like plexiglass um, or something tough there that, that's really got some nice silicone uh, seal on here. So the, the, the touch buttons work really well, really easy to use, um, and same menu system that we're used to on a lot of Blizzard fixtures. On the top here, you also have a charge indicator for the rechargeable battery, which we'll talk about, an RFID uh, light so that you can set your wireless DMX settings there using that. There is an IR sensor that you'll notice here, and this is so that you can control this with an IR remote that you can get for these as well. It does not come with, but certainly um, a nice accessory that you can purchase uh, to control this with the IR remote. And then over on this end here, we can see the antenna there that's used for uh, the wireless control. It does wireless DMX or WDMX, so the, the industry standard uh, WDMX if you use that, or it also uses Blizzard Skywire, so if you're using Blizzard's Lightcaster or any other Skywire fixtures, this will work right along with that stuff. I do want to point out that the fixture does have this bracket, uh, so you can use this bracket in a couple of ways. Of course, we see this on a lot of fixtures. You can use this and the holes that are on there to put a clamp on here and clamp that and mount that that way. Or being a dual bracket here, we can use this as a stand and do some sort of um, uh, floor mounting so that we can just position it that way and angle it up on whatever it is that you're lighting. On the back side, we've basically just got two items on the back. Uh, both are water sealed. Uh, and, and weatherproof here with the rubber caps. And this one on this side, over on the right, is gonna be where your PowerCon um, power cable is gonna go. Now this is a special PowerCon compatible cable. Uh, it does come with the fixture, so you don't have to worry about that. And it is definitely built for outdoor as well. Um, and the Edison end on here is really, uh, really thick and built nice. Uh, but this one here goes right in, makes a nice sealed connection. Over here you'll notice that there's only one DMX port. And that's kind of interesting with this fixture. The Block 2 IP does come with this special adapter here. So you're going to put this 3-pin, which looks like regular 3-pin DMX, into the DMX in. And then it does split here to both a male and female 3-pin. So you have your basically DMX in and out here integrated right into this adapter, which then just gets plugged in with one single connector into the fixture. Of course, I would always you know, recommend that you run this fixture wireless anyhow. That way you don't have to worry about running any cords at all. Um, and like I already mentioned, we've got WDMX and Blizzard Skywire as two wireless options there, as well as the IR remote. Um, so that's pretty much everything uh, physical about the fixture. 
Um, it does also have a lot of built-in functions. It has built-in programs. You can, of course, run this as a, a static, kind of standalone fixture by using the built-in menu system uh, to mix the LEDs to the color of your choice or run some built-in auto programs. It has a virtual color wheel so you can have it sort of fade or cycle through the colors that are built in. Let's talk about the built-in battery for a second. This is the same Intellion lithium ion battery I believe that we see in a lot of uh, Blizzard's battery operated fixtures. I've really come to like the battery that's inside these. First of all, they last a really long time and in order to really get it to last a long time, it has three power saving modes. So if you're not worried about power or maybe you have it plugged in, you can set it to high output power and, and use the full, you know, take advantage of the full 25 watts on the LEDs. Or you can cut back the power to more of a power saving mode um, where you can make the battery last a really long time. I typically run all of my Blizzard battery operated fixtures on the medium output setting and I've gotten uh, minimum of six hours usually on, on most of my fixtures. I usually uh, use them for uplighting and sometimes they're fading through different colors and like I said I've had no problem having them run on the medium setting for six hours. So this has that great same rechargeable battery inside of there and really the only thing I end up using the power cord for then is to recharge the battery. Next, let's take a look at the Block 1 IP. So right off the bat, I have to say, the best thing about this fixture is its size and its form factor. This is going to be super convenient for using at outdoor events. You can put this thing practically anywhere, um, whether you're doing some uplighting on a pillar or any sort of beam or around a tent. Um, really, you know, you can use this for just about anything and it's just so tiny. You can fit it into probably a stick of truss if you've got some truss at an outdoor event. Um, so just the convenience of its portability and its size to fit practically anywhere is definitely a huge advantage of the Block 1 IP. It, just like the other uh, Block 2 IP there, it is also an all metal rugged housing. And again, um, you know, I can just feel you know, how compact and rugged and well built this is. Um, very similar to the Block 2 IP in the way that it's built and the way that it looks and all of our features here. Uh, but there are some differences, so I'll talk about those. The LED on the top, of course, being the Block 1, we only see one LED. It is still a COB or chip on board LED. It is still 25 watts. But one of the differences here is this is a 5-in-1, but not RGBW and UV. This is RGBAW. So I'm not sure why Blizzard went with the two different LEDs. Um, personally, I would rather have the same type of 5-in-1 LED in all of these block fixtures. That way we can use a mixture of the block 2s and block 1s um, and be able to just you know, have the same LED and be able to mix the same colors um, with the same DMX channels, uh, knowing that the LED is the same in all these fixtures. So, Again, this is RGBAW in the block one. A lot of the rest of this is the same. We see the wireless antenna here. It does both WDMX and Blizzard Skywire. Um, it has an IR port here for using the um, IR remote if you want to control it that way. And then again, we see a, a tiny screen here for the menu and th those four touch sensitive buttons. So again, super easy to use those. Um, you know, I was thinking that, you know, having this nice thick uh, glass or plexiglass on the front here that it might be difficult to use the touch sensitive buttons, but I've had a really easy time using those. Um, again, we see the RFID here for um, selecting our wireless DMX channel or connecting our WDMX that way, and then also the charge indicator for charging the battery. It's the same Intellion lithium ion battery that's inside here as the rest of the fixtures that have that. So again, um, it's a super great battery. It lasts a really long time. Uh, these ports are on the bottom of this fixture. Uh, actually, there's really only one. The only thing we have here is our um, 
PowerCon compatible power cable. So this is more of the, I think it's the, the true cable where it's really good, just got the two notches, just like the rest of um, the PowerCon compatible cables do. Um, and then of course has the rubber cap here to seal it from the outdoor elements. Does come with the, the power cable of course. Again, really the only thing you need to do with that is use it to charge up the battery. Um, you'll notice on this that there are no DMX ports. So you do have to use this either as a standalone fixture using the built-in menu screen to either set up one of the auto programs or a static color, or you can, of course, use wireless control. But there, there is no DMX in and out, which is probably part of what makes it so compact. Uh, but I use wireless with most of my fixtures anyway. I've really uh, come to like Blizzard Skywire. It's very easy to get all the fixtures connected. Um, and I use the, the light caster and the distance. I've had very good luck with, with very far distances controlling all the lights. So this is the block one again. Um, here's the power button on the side, uh, just like the block two IP, which I forgot to show you before, the power button is on the side. Um, even the power button, you can just tell, this is a really, um, you know, it's not a plastic, it's not a cheap, you know, power button that's gonna break. This is a, a metal power button to go right along with the rest of the metal housing. Um, again, just like the block two IP, it has the dual bracket here. So again, we can mount this using a clamp or we can use it as a stand. things before we wrap up this video both of these fixtures when you're controlling them with DMX they can be controlled in either five six eight or eleven channels of course the more channels the more control you have over these fixtures but again I mean it, it's really awesome that they have the same DMX footprint but with the slight caveat that they are two different LEDs both five in one but the black one having the amber and the black two having the UV uh, they both have electronic dimming and strobe, which looks really great. Uh, both of them have 32-bit and selectable uh, dimming curves, which looks really smooth. They both have built-in programs, auto programs, built-in colors, and of course you can also customize your own colors as well. Again, both the Block 1 IP and Block 2 IP can be controlled wirelessly with either WDMX or Blizzard's NEFI I'm using Blizzard Skywire. The Block 2 IP can be uh, hardwired DMX using the included um, adapter. One other thing I do want to note is the power cable that comes with both of these. The Block 2 IP uses a different power cord than the Block 1 IP. So that would be another thing that um, I would say, you know, it would be really nice if they both used the same cable that way I don't really have to keep track of you know which cables are for the block 2 IPs and, and which ones are for the block 1. I believe the, the power cable here that comes with the block 1 IP is the same as for like the Tornado uh, Sky WDMX's. Um, so those are the same where they just have the two notches on them. Um, but the block 2 IP this power cable is a little bit different in that it has these four notches on it so you do have to sort of keep track of those separately if you're going to buy a mixture of these fixtures. Of course, they're both really great products because of the 25 watt super bright LEDs and the IP65 rating. So using these outdoors at some outdoor events is going to be really exciting. I can't wait to get some more outdoor events and be able to offer more outdoor lighting options for my customers. Um, but I would have to say uh, the Block 1 IP is really unique in that it's really tiny and we're going to be able to put this practically anywhere. Having a mixture of these would be obviously the best situation. That way we can use these where we need them. 
So I want to thank you again for tuning in to this video. We've taken a look at the Block 1 IP and Block 2 IP, two of Blizzard's most recent outdoor rated fixtures. I hope you subscribe so you don't miss any future product reviews. We've got a few more great ones coming up for you this year. I'm Travis, Blizzard's Basement Hero. Again, thanks for tuning in, and I'll see you next time.